Hey folks, so this is one of your videos from the section that deals with inverses, section 6.1 for this particular textbook. So what I'd like for you to take a look here at is first of all just simply the definition. The definition of one-to-one -one is simply that it's going to pass the horizontal line test. We are going to look at this further in class, but for right now just go ahead and fill in that blank and then we'll talk about it in class. What I really want you to focus on in this particular video is the interesting facts about functions and their inverses. There's five interesting facts. Have this sheet handy in class because I'm going to refer to it quite a bit, um, not only in this section but later in the chapter as well. So the first fact is that a function is going to have an inverse if it is one-to-one. -one. And my notation for that, so let's learn how to, how to notate it. You already know that a function, um, we typically call it f of x, but an inverse, we write it differently. Uh, it is f, it has a little negative one that looks like a power, but it is not a power. Uh, and then the x, we read that f inverse of x. The biggest takeaway on this particular fact, interesting fact, is that the original function and the function inverse, these guys are going to be undo buttons of each other. Everything in math has an undo button. Um, so when we look at interesting fact number two then, um, when you think about something uh, that is an undo button of domain, you might think of range. And so what we have here is that the domain of the original f of x is going to be the same thing as the range of my inverse function. The range of my original will be the domain of my inverse. Interesting fact number three says that if you have two functions that are inverses of each other, and for this particular example, I'm calling these two functions f of x and g of x, then something is always going to be true. You remember that earlier in the semester, back in chapter two, we talked about composition. So what we find that happens, especially with inverses, is that f of g is going to be equal to g of f. This did not always occur back in chapter two, but if they're inverses of each other, it is going to happen. And not only that, these two are equal to x. Um, and what you find is that we actually ran into this on one of our tests uh, all the way back in that particular section. Interesting fact number four. If you have the coordinate x, y, and it is on your original function f of x, then what you are going to find is that the coordinate y, x will be on your inverse function. This actually goes back to interesting fact number two. Remember that domain is an x value and range is a y value. So quite frankly, um, this, is, this is exactly number two um, interesting fact rewritten to get number four, but they're essentially the same interesting fact. Interesting fact number five says that the two functions, the original function and the inverse graph, these guys are going to be symmetric about the line y equals x. Remember, we talked about the line y equals x um, all the way back in our parent functions. So my two graphs will be symmetric about this line. In other words, my line y equals x is going to be a new mirror 